can it, you know, your idea of entertaining okayness is that I will be okay yeah, later on, and usually based on either what someone else does or I do. You know? That's how the mind and selfing entertains okayness. It doesn't o- entertain okayness as an inherent state. Yeah? That's always available at all times. It entertains okayness as a conditional state based on you, basically. Or, if you're a real type of victim, it's the, that conditional state is based on someone else, which is even worse, in a way. Because now you've got to pray for them to change. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not enough to ask for help. You've got to ask someone else. Download some help there. You know? <laughs> so, the idea of... Uh, yeah. of okayness <coughs> in the thought system that we're saddled with is is injected with time, yeah? So what happens is maybe you're wanting to be okay now is a judgment that you're not already, yes? So yeah. the urge to want to be okay obviously has to come from a belief that you're not okay. If you were okay, there wouldn't be an urge to be okay, yeah? The urge to be okay is is produced by the feeling that you're not okay. And then how is that feeling, you're not okay, how is that uh, brought about? Well, it's usually brought about by, you remember once when you were okay, and you don't, you're saying you don't feel like that, and then immediately it says, but maybe I will be okay. Yeah? It never brings about an okayness now. It gives you a false hope that you might will be okay, but you're still left with the judgment that you're un-okay. Yeah? You're just trying to find means to deal with it instead of questioning that, that, that interpretation. Who the hell is telling this that it's un-okay? The same thing that was telling me it was a great idea to take a shot is the same thing that's talking about, hey, you didn't say hello to a newcomer last night at a meeting. It's the exact same voice. Yeah? And to me, listening to that is the reliance on self, the activity of reliance on self. There's no reliance on self like it happened 20 years ago. There's no thing to rely on. It's an activity called reliance on self. In AA we say the root of the problem is obsession with self. I think it's a little farther back. I think it's identification as a self. Now, if you don't know what I mean by that, the identification as a self is a verb the mental process is doing right now. Yeah? If you're listening to the thoughts in a certain way, the thoughts are inferring that there's a someone there. Yeah? It's inferring, assuming, implying, insinuating. Yeah? So, like, I was, I was back east uh, to, do, to do some talks, and I hadn't been there for a while, and I'll use this example because it makes it it's pretty good. And so when I had been, my hair had been growing, gotten long, you yeah? know? So I I went there, and people were saying, man, you're growing your hair, Paul. And I said, well, I'm actually not growing my hair. I'm just not cutting my hair. It's not like I have two hours set off every week to grow my hair. And then if I'm thinking it's not growing fast enough, I'll just up the hours. The same thing with meditation and everything else. I don't feel like what I think I should feel, so let's just up the meditation. So here, this ridiculous idea, I'm going to up how long I'm going to spend growing my hair on Saturday, so you know, four hours, because it's not growing long enough, or it's not suitable yet to me. It should be growing faster. (coughs) Now, it sounds pretty absurd, yes? But the language assumes that I have something to do with something I have nothing to do with. What I'm telling you, the language, the yapping in one's head is doing that quite often. It's giving you the idea that you have something to do with what you have nothing to do with. And that's where the freedom lies. When you start, if you see the movement of selfing, which is to claim, this is a mental activity, almost like it has a parasitical nature. It doesn't have a life. It claims a life that's presented by this opportunity. This opportunity is a vehicle for life to happen. Consciousness is moving through it, through it, and it's becoming conscious of things, subtle things like thoughts and emotions, but grosser things like cars and rocks. Yeah, and there's an experience going on. So, light consciousness is being provided by through us by consciousness. Your know, life is happening. <clears throat> so, the parasitical mental process wants a life. It doesn't have one of its own, so it needs a host in a sense. And in this way, we're not a noun like a host. But we're going to host the parasite, and the parasite is going to live through this possibility. Yeah. So what does it do? It jacks into the thought system, just like other parasites in the body do the same thing. Yeah. There was a great 
<coughs> uh, nature video where they show this this fungus, this mushroom. Yeah, it's an incredible mushroom. It sends out its spores, and the spores land on ants, and they land on their head, and they burrow into the head of the ant. Yes, and they jack into the ant's system, its brain, and tells them to go to a damp, dark, danky place, like mushrooms like. As soon as the spore is using the ant for transportation to get to a place it can't get to, it can't rely on the wind to blow it there, it's much better if I grab this car, like a high car jacking, and drive it to a dank alley and then park there, and then I'll just park the car and I'll be there. And this is exactly what it does. So the ant's driven to go to a place, a dark, dank, wet place, and as soon as it arrives there, the the spore breaks out, breaks through his brain, I mean the the skull, whatever it is, in the ant, and the mushroom starts growing. Yeah? You we think we're far superior than that? You don't think you're getting taken over by a lot of activities? Give me a break. So there's another one called Candida. You hear Candida in the body? A lot of people are discovering it that it's a cause of a lot of trouble with that, that digestion. And actually, they're learning a lot more about it. Because the candida doesn't just stay in the digestion, it's learned to break through the intestinal walls and it travels throughout the body. Now they have research that they're saying candida is causing sinus infections. It's in the brain, because the brain has this, anywhere like the membranes of your nose and everything, where it's wet, the candida likes. Yes. Now the candida has a food. It's sugar. That's what it wants, yeah? Now, it can't go shopping, obviously. It's got one limitation. It can't leave the body, which is its world, yeah? This is where it's living. This is its ecosystem. Without you knowing it, there's other things living in this possibility. And it has to get sugar. How is it going to get sugar? You know what I mean? Well, what it does is it influences the thought system of you... And you become a bagel lover. <laughs> you become a Wonder Bread lover. You become a croissant, baguette, dessert lover. Yeah? Voila, it succeeds, and now you're claiming its drives as yours. I really love bagels. It's the freaking candida. The candida has you in an emotional love affair with bagels, so that no matter what happens, good days, bad days, jobs, no jobs, you're going to get those freaking bagels. And it's, it's a fucking life security, and we're feeding the candida. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, if you look at, let's say, the mental condition, one aspect is one grosser aspect of the parasite, which is alcoholism, which has now been studied for a while, since 1935, they got an insight, a download occurred that gave us a solution to an unsolvable unsol- uh, problem since before that. If you read the Psalms of the Old Testament, they're talking about winos and what to do with them. You couldn't do anything with them back then. You can't do anything with them now, really. The alcoholism is just like that, exactly like a candida, just exactly like something, but it's not a, it's not a form. You can't take a, an x-ray of alcoholism. You won't see it. It's not in the body. It's not. It's not hiding in the elbow or behind the liver. There's no thing called alcoholism, but its effects will be seen to in the body because this is a form of expression, and therefore whatever is living through this is going to express its qualities through this. And alcoholism has done it quite well with a lot of hosts in this room, actually, too. So here it goes. So this parasite, hostile parasite, really, to the supposed host comes in, and it has this drive to survive, like you seem to have an instinct to survive, but the, what it does is it jacks into the thought system, and then it presents its idea of you to the mind. This idea of being a long-lasting, independent, separate self, yeah, that loves to get high, or something like that, or it feels totally uncomfortable in their skin all the time. Did you feel uncomfortable in your skin when you were two and three? Probably not. We grew into these conditions that demand relief, and then it has a lot of ideas what that relief is going to be. <laughs> so, jacks into the thought system, and it presents an idea of you to the mind. Yeah, let's call it self. And so now, no matter how hostile the takeover it happens, you're not going to be able to entertain to be free from it 
you're going to have to get therapy for it, try to, you know, fit it, fit your life around it, somehow mix lies about it, don't tell the truth, have secrets, yeah? Because now you're taking it to be you. You cannot make the leap of, I can be free from it, because all you are doing is, I can be free as it, which is the slavery to this idea of being a self, yeah? The parasite has you on a leash. It doesn't care what uniform you wear, you know, tattoos and leather jackets or a spiritual robe, it doesn't care. The act of being identified as it is still in, is still in progress, yeah? That's all at once. Because now it can express itself through this possibility. So the same craziness that happens at an office, if you move into a temple, happens at a temple. You know, they have a lot of politics at temples after a year or two. If you moved in there, it's really great to visit. Move in and see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. People are stabbing each other in the backs and talking bad about other teachers and all like this. It's just like being at a fucking office, but you're wearing robes and maybe there's some loving gazes around you. Know? <laughs> Who knows? So what we're talking about is just that. Last night, I'm hearing people talk about something that's driving them freaking crazy. Dri- and when they're, when they're t- removed from it, they have clear, beautiful shares, and then they come back and they've gone out again. And they've just been in hell for about three weeks, yeah? And it looked like, when I was listening to all these people share, we're heavily overmatched to this process, this problem. You know what I mean? The one of the best processes, the recovery program of AA, it has very limited success in a sense. The parasites freaking winning out quite often. Yeah, after twenty years of twenty years of immunity, people go out, and then they run into another dilemma. They go out and they think, you know, if I, if you know, I can just go back to AA. AA will be just like it was, and AA may be just like it was, but they won't be. Now the grace that allowed them to have some freedom every day is gone and there's the craving and the obsessions kick back in. The parasite or the dog is awake, yeah? And now it's getting unruly and it's going to piss on your furniture and waylay your daughter and savage her sexless and then you'll cry out for mercy and still there'll be more. (laughs) He'll be taken over. (laughs) He'll be taken over once again. No matter how much built up around you will probably be destroyed in a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? 20 years of, you know, it took 20 years to get to this point of sobriety. It takes one second to lose it. Yeah, it's very... If you look at this place, it's much time, is much quicker when you destroy something than when something's built. Yes? To build a house takes a while. To destroy it, you can do it in a couple hours. Yeah? To have a relationship, it may take a while, five years, you could destroy it in one night. Yeah, so, it, the, the lid, it leans in that direction. So let's just say that we've been taken over by a foreign installment. Yeah? It's sort of like a thief in the night. It came in when we were quite young, got in, in insidious pla- insidiously placed its, its importance here. So you started to lose the sense of being alive and being... It's spontaneous and wonder and awe, and you grew into more of a mental introspection, yeah? You, everything was thought about. Not everything was done, but it got to a point where everything started to become thought about more than the doing, yeah? In other words, the doing when you were a kid, that was it. It, it overrode everything else. When I was playing, I wasn't wor- worrying about will I be playing next week because time hadn't set up yet. I didn't, I, I wasn't thinking, this sucks where I am too much because I didn't think I could be anywhere else yet. I had to entertain this insane idea. When I looked at my mother, she could have been heavy and ugly. I would have loved her no matter what. I didn't walk around my house thinking my room was too small and you know I should have gap clothes and sunglasses. I could care less about any of that because there was an immediacy to life because something that became dominant wasn't dominant yet. The thought system. Yeah. But then as soon as the thought system started to gain, let's say, power, which means it started to suck your interest and attention up into that that black hole, the sense of being alive was really forgotten, and then we started to take an interpretation of life as what's going on here, yeah? And so people were very easily, you know how you were conditioned to think what you should want. And you know, how many people I know who got married when they really never wanted to get married at that time, but they think they were supposed to get married and stuff like this. Yeah, the conditioning is very, very strong. And so we're led down all these paths to try to find happiness. And it's really disappointing when 
when we get everything right and everything seems to be great, it doesn't translate into an ease and comfort. It's really freaking disappointing, isn't it? Yeah. So what I'm saying here, let's say if something happened and I got relief from this dilemma of selfing, this is going to be like reverse engineering. Yeah? Just like when if you got an alien spaceship, what supposedly they did, I'm not, I don't know if there's really the truth or not, but that's what would happen. If they found an incredible technological thing, they reverse engineer it. That's how they find how to build it. Yeah? So they realize how it was built by breaking it down from its, it's already there. So in the sense this is, this, you will know the problem from the solution. Yeah? So if you get relief from the problem, you'll get a really clear idea what the, if you get relief from the problem, you'll get a really clear idea about the problem. Yeah? And for me, the idea is you're not that. And it's never going to ra- rise to a point of being anything. It can only appear to be to you. You're always primal. You're always primary. Because false evidence cannot... Up- it says false evidence appears real in, in recovery. FBA, you know, fear. False evidence appearing real. The only thing that the highest level false evidence can ever rise to is appearing real. It can't be real because it's false, Yeah. It can't go over that limitation. But it can appear real to you because you override everything here. Yeah? You are giving everything all the meaning it has. No, if you don't believe it or not, you're giving everything all the meaning it has. Nothing is giving you a meaning. You're giving it all the meaning it has. Yeah? So, false evidence can appear real here, but it can't be real. Yeah? The idea of being a self can appear to be real, but it can't be real. That's, that's the basis of the solution. You realize that what seems to be happening could never have happened. Yeah? <laughs> that's what it's like. What seems to be happen, happening could never have happened. Yeah? Could never have happened. The only why, why it seems to be happening is if I believe it to be so. If, I'm, if, I've, if I have an immunity to it, it's false evidence stays exactly where it is, which is false evidence. <laughs> it doesn't have any oomph to appear real, because the oomph comes from you and me. Yeah. So this illusion, or trance, isn't done from some outside force. All the thought system can do is point that there's a you. Yeah. It can infer, so like when I said about the hair, someone says, oh, you're growing your hair. That's inferring I'm, I'm the one who's doing it, yeah? This is happening all day with the language. It's happening up here, and when we're talking with other people, it's we're all in cahoots. We're all keeping ourselves in a trance, in a sense, yeah? It's unbelievable, really. It really is. We're all, we're all giving each other qualities none of us have. Like, we're this huge doer of every fucking thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's insane, yeah? And it goes very, it's, it seems very innocent, you know? Oh, yeah, you're growing your hair, oh, yeah. It would be like me digesting my own food, you know? That's insane, isn't it? But then, when you come to the thought system, you believe you're the thinker of it. You don't see that as a more insane leap? At least digestion you know, would be a burrito, and you could hear the gurgles, and then you'd see the return, you know, the, the refuse, and you could write yourself into that story. Yeah, I took a shit. I ate it, I must have digested it. And, but this is a subtle process we're claiming the thoughts. Yeah? And I'm hearing it all night, sitting there. Oh, I was thinking of this incredible fantasy, and it really shook me up. Why did it shake you up it's, if it's false evidence? It could only shake you up if it appeared real to you. There's your solution. Everything's getting hatched right where you are. Yeah? And we're nonchalantly yapping, talking, and consistently coming from a sense of doership with things we have nothing to do with. Yeah? And no, we everyone, oh yes, I know that. Everyone wants, wants to get into like the, uh, you know, the advanced class. No, stay in the simplicity of it. If you're not the thinker of the thoughts, and the thoughts aren't about you, they're about a you, if you, you have to believe it to be the sense of you, and it cannot be the sense, it can only appear to be the sense. Yeah? In other words, no, no, no devil a thing is doing anything to you. 
All they can do is infer and point and assume you and I are making the leap. It's sort of like all the fingers pointing at the moon. There is an any moon. We just see the fingers pointing and then we assume we're the moon. I'm the doer. I'm the haver. I'm the thinker. I'm the feeler. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a da 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 da. And it's we're constantly being <coughs> embroiled in our own bonding mechanism, going on and on and on. And then we want relief, which seems like a natural, you know, movement. And then we go in a sense, but the desire for relief is ignorantly driven because the best relief from an imaginary problem is to see that it's imaginary. Yeah. It can never be so. It can only appear to be so to you. Yeah, You have the mi- bi- biggest role here. The biggest role. When the mind wakes up, what does it wake up to? It wakes up to, I'm not that. Yeah, I'm not the false moon. I am not the supreme doer. I am not the feeler. I am not the thinker. And there's the relief. It's not changing and manicuring and suppressing thoughts and trying to only have good feelings and only great actions, there'll still be the sense of you. you know? And then maybe you get into a path where you're going to try to lose your ego. Who the hell had an ego? Who believes I have an ego? Are you the owner of a, some unruly thing called an ego that's biting you in the ass all day? Well, then, what happens? If you lose ego, there's still the you that lost the ego. Obviously, ego isn't the bonding mechanism. It's used to bond, but the real bonding is the sense of the one who has the ego or doesn't have the ego. That sense of that oneness is the bonding point. Yeah, Everything else is facilitating that bonding. Thoughts, feelings, actions are all being used to facilitate the bonding as you're the actor, you're the thinker, you're the feeler. That's what it does. The thought cannot bind you, but when it's my thought, it can bind you. <coughs> yeah. The biggest story is, the, the biggest story is you and I believe we have stories. That's, we're had by the stories that we think we have. We're, we're imprisoned by the stories that we think we have. Yeah. What happens if something occurs? It refers back to an old story. Yeah. So then I don't know if you're in recovery or not, but recovery is an incredible book. To me, it's, it's the best scripture of all. Give me the book of recovery. It, it describes things in such, such a simplistic manner that really work for me. And it has this beautiful statement in a part of it where it says, being convinced, so hopefully you come into recovery and you've gotten your ass kicked enough that you're open to being convinced of certain ideas. And it says, beginning con- being convinced that self, this small little s, which is an activity, there's no thing called self, it's not a bondage to self, yeah? It's not like, this is a chair, and this is me, supposedly, and then if you get, put some handcuffs on me, you could bond me to this chair, yeah? And then you would see me, and you'd see the chair, and then there'd be a bonding agent, which would be the handcuffs. What it says in recovery is so beautiful, the, the use of language. It says bondage of self, yeah? So there's no thing to be bonded to. If self was a thing, meaning you... You could be bonded to it, yeah, but it isn't. It's a mental activity, so it's bondage of, yeah. So that activity has to be in place for the bondage to seem to be so, yeah. So it says, all right, self manifests. It says, being convinced that self manifested in various ways. So there's tons of them. You can see it. Because the selfing, through claiming, will use everything it comes in contact with to facilitate the pointing, the inferring, the assuming, the implying that there's a self. Thoughts, feelings, experiences, objects, cars, girls, kids, houses, everything. Everything you come, the mind comes in contact with, through conscious contact, it will claim it and use that to facilitate the bonding of the mind to this crazy idea that I'm a long-lasting independent separate entity. Yeah? 
So it's not about stopping having thoughts or feelings or this or that, or like this great master said. It's not about giving up your possessions, just give up the possessor. So it's not about giving up your thoughts, just give up the thinker. It's not about giving up your feelings, you can't. Give up the feeler. Yeah? It's not giving up your kids, just give up being the one who has the kids. Yeah? Just see what happens. Maybe you'll have to allow the kids to truly be kids instead of wanting to enforce your idea of what a kid should be like when they're a kid. You know, based on some idea that what you weren't able to do, I'm going to just make my kid do it. You know, what I mean? he's going to he's going to surf no matter freaking what. You know what I mean? And he'll love it. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want to surf. Yeah. So this whole idea, <clears throat> as soon as the my occurs, whatever that is. Thoughts, feelings, experiences, days, time, will be now used to facilitate the bonding of the mind to this idea. Yeah? Once again, the movement of selfing claims everything. Yeah? So there's the thoughts, I'm the thinker. Yeah? Feelings, I'm the feeler. Now the feelings and the thoughts are used by that conditional mind, by that little aberration, by that parasitical cynical movement, it uses the thoughts to facilitate the bonding of what we are to an idea of what we're not. Yeah? And it's doing a pretty good job. It can do it in time. It cannot do it forever, but it can do it in time. And when you have a miracle, let's say, in 10 in the morning, you usually forget it by 12. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have a resentment, you ha- you may have it for 35 years. Yeah? There's a huge, strong bias in how it's going to go. Yeah? In other words, you just take a, the same mind, if you're having a good day, how long does it last? You stop being worried that hey, it's going to end or they're going to find out I don't deserve it or whatever. Yeah? The same mind, if, if it, it's presented with what it, it, it takes to mean being bummed out, it'll say, I'm going to be bummed out forever. Yeah? So it's, things are going well, let's shrink it. When things are going bad, let's elongate it. Find one example. That's its tr- that's its theme. That's how it's going. Yeah, you can see the whole ocean in one drop. You can see the whole activity of selfing by one example of it. You'll see it's claiming, it's using whatever it's claimed to facilitate, and using it as a pointer that there's a someone that this is happening to. And now the world of oneness, if you want to say oneness or thisness, is now into this and that. Now into yes and no. Now into high and low. Now into connected and disconnected. And now you'll feel like you're on the beam and then you're off the beam. Then you're on the beam. Or you surrendered, but then you took it back. And then you surrender again, but then you take it back. On and on. Nothing gets established. Nothing gets stabilized. It's all very, very in flux. And you're the only false singularity. Yeah? You don't realize that you're in flux. Agitating, agitation, beginning agitation, trying to use agitation to find stillness is just agitation. Like an old Zen master said. You can't use activity to find stillness. That would be an activity. Yeah. You're not going to get out of the little tiny something. Self isn't going to get out of self. It's not going to finally pop out and be a self, free from self. Yeah. You can't use the mind to find the mind. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. These things are said over and over and over again. These are little hints, little clues. St. Francis, what's looking is what you're looking for. What? Yes, right now, what's looking is what you're looking for. The feeling of being the who, the one who's looking is the interpretation of what's looking by a mental process. Our time usually starts there. You don't realize that was a process. You didn't have it when you were a kid. You were what's looking. Yeah? that was looking for the teeth, or looking for this, or looking for that. There was no ambiguity there. Now, the what's looking has been claimed, and it's turned into who's looking, and the who's looking definitely isn't what it's looking for. (laughs) Because it's seeking out constantly. So it wants to find something to bring back to this, this limited, or empty, or absent, or lacking thing. Yeah? Instead of seeing I'm not that, maybe you'll be freed from the need to be liberated. You can just be liberated on whatever way it's appearing on this freaking Saturday. Instead of trying to chase an idea you think of liberation, you know. 
as a primary, I'll have a great advantage to everyone else. No, you may not. You'll just be awake, which is your inherent condition. Yeah, You'll be aware of being awake. And everything else that's assuming or trying to put you to sleep or say you were once asleep, yeah, and you're definitely going to be asleep again, so boo hoo hoo on your awakeness. <coughs> you're just not, you have an immunity to all that baloney, and you're just resting on what's obvious. And then blue becomes blue to you, and red's red, and green's green. You start noticing things clearly. Yeah, it's like you've been living in a room that was dark the whole time, and you came up with some insane ideas of like how to find the bathroom. Or you know, not to hit, hit your knee on a chair, getting knee, you know knee pads and having like a, a preemptive apology to everyone you're going to run into when you try to get out. Why not just find the light? If the light was on in the room, you'd see the door. You'd know where you could find the bathroom because there'd be a light to be able to see it. You are the light. Yeah. And yet, you can appear to be the distortion. You can't be the distortion in a sense. You can only appear to be the distortion. <clears throat> What's ever appearing to be never reaches the level of being so. It just appears to be so in that moment of time. Yeah, to me, it's like a distortion or a fabrication or a veil, if you want to call it, uh, where you can be lacking in access because you really believe the access is somewhere other than where you are. When that final freak and crazy idea is removed, then you realize you are what you've been looking for, and you are always available at all times, right where you are. Yeah. The mind finds finds freaking rest, and then it, ex- it expresses that as a quality. You, you know, you now start enjoying peace of mind instead of looking for peace of mind. You now feel okay instead of hoping you will be okay. And ruminating how great you were once, you know? Your interest attention doesn't get wasted going into past events and mulling them over or worrying about future events so much. You basically have the availability of your interest attention now and it enriches your Saturday. Yeah, it enriches it. You're here, you know, you're awake. You're seeing the birds and the hummingbirds and the smells and you're, you're on. You're like, you're on the pulse of life. And after a while, you don't want to move. All the little butts, or all of this and that, those little whoo, scare, you know, when you have a reaction. <coughs> as long as it's not you that's reacting, the reaction will s- simmer down quickly. Once it becomes you reacting, then a big story gets access about how many days you've reacted in the past, and you're definitely <laughs> going to be reacting in the future when shit really hits the fan, like getting fired or having cancer or something. And so that incredible quality becomes a limited, uh, basic impossibility, but that you're going to seek for. Yeah? It's fucking insane. To me, it's the biggest heist I've ever noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's like the biggest heist. Mm -hmm. Because we usually start at square three. We didn't see the formulation from zero to one to two. We start at square three as if this is the Alpha and the Omega. I humbly beg to differ with that. I believe there's something prior to this, yeah? And I would say you're more of that than what's appearing. Yeah. Yet, this appearance is going to be the threshold of an experience, and I'll tell you, entertaining a little of this will leaven the, the load of this. You'll travel lighter on a stabilized level, you know? Day in and day out for years and years and years. You won't be able to see like zeros on your account book. There won't be any ching raising up. But I'll tell you, it's like uh, just like anything else, it can become a habit. There's no choice involved. You just start leaning this way, and you just keep leaning this way. Yeah, the drama comes. It doesn't have any intrigue. You know, you're not here mining to be special and right anymore. Things just all the things that we used to buy, you subscribe to it immediately. Oh yes, I'll be right. Oh yes, I'll be special. I'll be special. Love. You don't buy it anymore. It just comes. It's like all those the junk mail you never even open up. You know, they come in the mail slot, but you're not sitting there perusing it and wondering. Oh, like this lady last night. Oh, the fantasy. I mean, how can so, how can something that's not happening have an effect? It can only have an effect when you're entertaining. Yeah. 
The limousine and the coke, there was no limousine and no coke waiting for him. The effect was totally produced by a mental activity. Yeah? Based on what was not happening. So there was no ability to have any influence on anyone because it's not happening. But the influence is not from a thing, it's you and I. It's the condition of our mind that gives meaning to that limousine and that coke. Some t- you could say, and some people you see in recovery, they glorify the old days, and they're bound to fucking do it again. Yeah? They have a glorification of, oh, how it was so great to get so crazy. No, it fucking wasn't. Yeah? It was like when I was a kid, I'd uh, go out when I was 13, I'd go out, get in trouble, right? Go to a party, we'd sleep over at my friend's house, and my whole peer group was there. I'd piss on the Castro convertible which was a no-no. These kids would never let me forget that. You know what I mean? Ruin that. How am I going to hide the sheets or any of this? Get arrested that day. There's a couple of fights. And I go to school on Monday. Oh, we had a great weekend. <laughs> Pure interpretation. If you broke it down moment to moment, it fucking sucked. Yeah? But the head makes, takes all that up and makes, oh, it was such a great, I can't wait to do it again. <clears throat> this is insane to me. Insane. You know? <laughs> it just blows my mind. I want to feel really shitty so I can make it seem really great. I'd rather just feel all great, you know. Forget about making anything out of anything anymore. <coughs> I don't want to spend the time. Why don't I anymore? Because <coughs> something has shifted. My mind shifted out of one activity, which was the selfing, and now it's attending to another activity, which is what is, in a sense. And this activity never stops, never deviates, is always available at all times, never blinks, never looks away, and it's truly a place to rest your freaking head. Yeah? So in a way, that's what we're doing. We're reverse engineering it. If you can describe how this stuff formulates, maybe it could be of help, you know? I find most people that I meet, if they would just have immunity to thought, that would be a, a monumental event. If they could have immunity of thought, let's say half the time, you wouldn't believe what would happen. Yeah? And then through that, you realize what enslavement to the thoughts are, are doing. Yeah? If you could just have a strong enough sample and get a flavor of it, and then let the mind expand on the principle. In this one event, these weren't my thoughts. Maybe in all events, they're never my thoughts. Yeah? Like they, have a, they have a little a bumper sticker that says, don't believe... Uh, don't believe every all your thoughts or something like that. I say, don't believe any of your thoughts. You know why make why go half fucking way? Just go to the absolute. Yeah, and you see what a life is like, not driven by or led by navigation by by thought. Just find out what it's like. You may really like it. It may suit you a lot better. Yeah. I'm literally fried. Sophie took a lot out of me today. But in a really good way. You just feel so emptied out, yeah. Mm. The only thing that's left is my is the enthusiasm I've been shot up with for twenty something years on this message. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) You know, I always had a drive in a certain way to be of help, but this is like a quantum level. Yeah. I'd much rather speak about this than the nuts and bolts of how to get out of a mess that you think you're in. I'd rather just realize you're not in it so much faster. The best, the fastest way to get out of something is to realize you're not in it. It doesn't take any time. Yeah? And that's an absolute. In almost every condition we seem to be in, if you would help, if that was the, the sense you were holding underneath it, it would, that, though, all that would be shown to be house of cards. You would see that you're not even, you cannot, it's an impossibility that you were ever in this thing that you're seeking to get out of. You don't see that the seeking to get out of it is a form of being in it. If the bait is imaginary, yeah? If the place that seems to be dry, that we feel is unsuitable, is not so, yeah? Then it's. To try to leave it would be a form of being captured in a sense by it. Yeah. So they have a beautiful statement where, in AA where they say self can't get out of self. 
So, selfing is the discomfort, yet people want to get out of the discomfort as the source of the discomfort. To an extent where they'll come to meetings like this, and they're just waiting to get the message, you know, they want to have an experience of their own absence, <laughs> which is an impossibility. <laughs> you can save yourself a lot of time. You're never going to get it. <laughs> never. There's no exemption to that rule. No, no exception to the rule. No one, no one here is getting it. There's an old guy uh, had a great joke. He was at a spiritual group, and he said, "All right." He says, what, which one would you choose, a million dollars or enlightenment? So, of course, everyone were good spiritual seekers. They said, a million, they said enlightenment. He says, I take the million dollars because at least I'll be there to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> when enlightenment dawns, there ain't no you. And there ain't no you before enlightenment dawns. Yeah. It's not like there was ever a you. There just appeared to be a you. What's being dismissed is not there to be dismissed. What's being erased is not there to be erased. That's the erasing of it. Yeah? It's an appearance. This is an ongoing appearance because that's how it fools the mind. So it needs a lot of, lot of reinforcement, a lot of glue to be applied all day, and that's why we're saddled with the thought systems we're saddled with. Because that's what its main uh, objective is, is to keep inferring, assuming, implying that there's a self. Yeah? We do it with all our talking together. We do it all the yapping on the TV, all the sitcoms and the dramas and the horror movies and the romantic things. It's always me, 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 me. Things are happening to me. Yeah. What would happen if that was dismissed? And you would probably very quickly get to the point, hey, I don't know if this is so. And maybe you'd start questioning what it seems to be so ironclad Instead of looking down at the, down the tracks and trying to get relief from all the destinations you end up in, you know, let's stay away from the express to hell. Let's have, I'm getting better. I'm only taking locals to hell. You know, <laughs> instead of that, you'd go the other way and see what created this little fake railroad track and station, <laughs> and why you seem to always buy a ticket, yeah, and why you're always at the same station. Whatever train you get off, you're always at the same station. <laughs> Maybe. And therefore, why get on if you never get off and leave the same station? Maybe you could realize something. I don't know. I'm ho- I'm in hope- you know, I have faith in mind. I actually truly believe each and one of us has the wherewithal to entertain what we're offering here. If I didn't, I wouldn't do this. I'd be giving you something to do. And I'd say, this worked for me, so why don't you do this? Yeah, and then get back to me and say, let's see how you're doing. With it, yeah? This is nothing like that. This is just an idea. Let it in there and then see how it cooks. And you'll be the judge. Yeah. Not your head. Your head will make something out of it, but you'll feel it, you know. And then instead of being self centered, you'll start living being centered. It's different. It's bo- they're both centered, yeah. But there's a vast difference between self centered and centered. Yeah. Centered life is seen as happening. Self-centered life is seen as happening to me. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yes. Any questions today? So, if the head makes something out of this. Go to another meeting with someone else, maybe you like it more than me. Or go to the website and come here. And we'll just keep holding the certainty of what's so. Yeah. It's got to rub off on us. It does. I've seen it over the years, so. Your mind's going to try to make something out of it. That's what it does. Yeah, it's going to try to facilitate it, claim it, yes? And then use it for its own. Uh, embellishment. That's what it does. Uh, be clear about that. See it. And then just, but when it stops or wanes, what continues? Maybe you'll get a sense of what you really are. You're more the seeing of things than what's seeing the thing, you know. So. All right, well, we'll pass the basket. Mm-hmm. You have it in there? That red thing? Man, that is black. Thank you.
And I did record this. Hallelujah. <coughs> 